Today I have two buckwheat meads that I've made with two different yeasts and we're going to see what the taste difference is between them. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today, these are my two buckwheat traditional meads that I've made um, so far. Now, they're both buckwheat traditionals because they only use buckwheat, honey, water, and yeast. Super simple. However, the yeasts were the different uh, variable here. This is not a yeast shootout. I do a lot of those on the channel where I am taking a specific recipe, pairing it against each other with different yeast, all that. This isn't exactly the same because um, these recipes weren't exactly the same either. I'll go ahead and put them right here and here. So this is a buckwheat traditional that has uh, it was three quarters of a gallon of water, two pounds of buckwheat honey, and then the Lavin QA23 yeast. And this one started at uh, 1.060. This is a uh, Opshog Kvike or Kvike yeast mead. It was, I believe, three pounds of buckwheat honey, three quarters of a gallon of water, and then a vial of Opshog um, Kvike yeast. Now, the Kvik yeast is different because it, it is um, known for fermenting in hotter areas. It's a very uh, strong, <laughs> confident yeast, I guess. So it, uh, a lot of people use it for fermenting in really hot situations. So the point of this video is going to be to see the differences between them. They are about the same age. This one started... This started three days after this one, and you can notice that there's already a clarity difference. First of all, look how unclear this one is. They've been racked the same amount of times. This one, the Opshog, is much more clear, and um, I, I find that interesting. I think a lot of that boils down to your yeast. Yeast can affect the clarity of a mead. In this case, I think the QA23 is less clear. It's the same honey. That honey had a lot of um, solids in it, so it definitely left a lot of sediment, and that's just something to think about when using honey specifically. But the big thing here is the taste test. So let's go ahead and taste the difference. This is the QA23. This is the Kavik, Opshag Kavik, uh, and I'm curious to see what the differences are. So let's smell. So the what's interesting to me, the Opshag has really mellowed out the buckwheat honey um, smell, aroma. The buckwheat honey aroma is like very malty, very molassesy, and um, I mean it's it's wheat-y. It's got this grassy kind of aroma to it. And I've lost a lot of that with the Kavik. I, I mean it's still there, it's just light. Compared to the QA23, that is super strong. It still smells a lot like the honey itself. Um, I still get a lot of grassy, a lot of wheat-y smell, and definitely a lot of molasses uh, aroma. So that could be based on how fast they ferment. It also just depends on the yeast, if they like to return or retain the flavors of it. Let's go ahead and taste. Uh, I'm gonna start with the QA23. I should also say these are 45 days old. So not super old, but old enough. QA23. Um, it's kept the honey aroma, but I'm getting like a little bit of a sour taste from, not sour and, and like bad, sour in that there's not a lot of honey sweetness. I get the alcohol, I get the alcohol burn, and I get the wheat-y taste, but I'm not getting a lot of sweetness from honey. And that's because both of these fermented dry. Yeah, this one, it's taking a little bit of adjusting to get used to because it is so dry. Um, there is no perceived sweetness. Sometimes when you have certain alcohols, you have perceived sweetness and all that stuff. And I'm not really getting that here. Yeah, I mean, it definitely needs, this would do with some stabilizing and back sweetening with um, buckwheat honey, or maybe even just some, uh, probably some clover honey or something that would bolster honey character and continue to give us a little sweetness. It's pretty dry, a little bit tart. Um, it's got some astringency to it. It's kind of got a weird mouthfeel because of the buckwheat still kind of floating around and how unclear it is. Let's try now the Upshog. Whoa, that is vastly different. This one, it kind of has a coffee aroma to me. Very uh, dark roast. Um, I definitely got like espresso bean vibe from it. 
It's much more smooth. I kind of like what this Upshock has done. Um, it's very, it's a, it was a, seems like a clean ferment in that the clarity is for one is important, but there is still a decent amount of buckwheat honey, buckwheat honey character you get. While it's not on the nose, it is on the palate. It's retained some sweetness, more perceived sweetness than anything because there is, again, 1.000 gravity on this thing. So it is dry, technically. Yeah, I mean, it's got some, um, I get some fruity vibes from this one as well. It's pulled some like fruity esters out of this honey, which is interesting to me, like a blood orange, very dark fruit in that regard. They got a little bite from the alcohol. They both do, but it's much more smooth to me than the QA23. So that's interesting. I, I knew that, that they were gonna be different. And if you've never fermented with different yeasts, you'll find when you decide to ferment with a, you know, different kind of yeast that it does impart various flavors. So make sure you keep that in mind as you're making your brews. I found this to be really interesting because using yeasts or picking your yeast is really important for what you want to accomplish. There are certain yeasts that do really well with some things and there are some that don't do as well. Some yeasts are really good for fruity esters. Some are good for darker esters, dark berries, those various things. The one that I really enjoy out of these two, the QA23 is good. It did pull some nice ar aromatic characters out of the honey, but it didn't do as well with the actual honey flavor retention as the Opshag Kavik, which um, of course they, they were fermented at way different uh, temperatures. This Kavik was fermented at like on um, probably 85, 90 plus for pretty consistently because I left it outside, I put a heat wrap around it, it's in the summer, those things. The uh, QA23 fermented strictly at about 68 the whole time because it stayed in my house. Now that affects the um, flavors as well. It can affect the fermentation, the esters you pull out of specific honeys, the things that yeast do to the mead. So yeah, both of them have a decent amount of heat and that's okay. It's a young mead. They're still only about 45 days old. So I'm not expecting much in that regard. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. First of all, go try some Kavik um, yeast. There's the Opshog, there's crap. What's the other ones? I can't remember what the other kinds are, but uh, I will go ahead and put them right here. These are all the Opshog strains that I can think of. They're mainly used for beer brewing, but people have been using them for mead making and had some great success. I had great success with this. This came from, this mead specifically is from a different video where I tested a, the Opshog Kavik yeast with this recipe. And you can find that it's a collaboration with Doing the Most, who's another mead um, brewing YouTuber, and you should go check him out. But you can find that um, there's a video for this, Buckwheat Traditional. I wanted to do a video where I'm comparing the two and the results I got. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, vastly different yeasts, vastly different flavors, from the same honey, from the same water, super interesting stuff. And uh, here's the deal, you're only gonna know firsthand experience when you're, whenever you make this yourself. So go make a buckwheat traditional mead. I'll tell you this as a pro tip, you don't need much buckwheat honey to get the flavor. It's pretty strong, pretty potent. So thanks for uh, watching this video. I hope you'll hit like, subscribe, do all those things. Um, I post very regularly on this channel and over on the Man Made Mead Extras channel where I do a lot of mead reviews and various things. But I love getting to do this stuff and um, I'm just hoping to educate you, entertain you, and um, give you something to do when you're bored. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Cheers.